Hello everyone, this is Arcacia with Apache Homeschoolers and we are here with the monthly family spotlight that we're doing. Um, we have Tara and Joe Buchanan from WCIC actually. Joe's from the new station manager from WCIC. So just kind of a highlight of what we've been doing in these last few months is we've been doing family spotlights and we're just introducing homeschooling families in this area. They, we sit down and talk to them about their homeschooling journey and we've been connecting with other homeschoolers. So it's a great opportunity to connect and get to know some other homeschoolers in the area. So if you want to be part of our family spotlight, you can email us or send us a quick Facebook message and find out some more information about that. And we'd be happy to get back with you. In the meantime, Tara, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about you guys yourselves? Well, we were married in 97 and uh, we have four children. Our oldest is 20. Uh, Jolie, and then we have three boys, and I felt like uh, through the, the boys growing up years, most of the time I was just keeping them alive, um, but uh, we have a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 10-year-old. Um, and, and our 20-year-old is uh, not living with us, and she's just pursuing a whole bunch of other things, and she's done with my end of schooling, and our 17-year-old also finished school, and he's working full-time, so I'm down to just two kids at home, which actually feels easier when you're used to a bigger crowd. That's for sure. We have five ourselves. So and I'm down to four now homeschooling. So I definitely noticed a little bit of the change, but I'm actually also realizing I don't have that much time left with my older guys. <laughs> and so it's making me kind of miss them, even though they're not gone yet. <laughs> so I definitely understand that. So let's find out a little bit more about your guys' homeschooling journeys thus far. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what your homeschooling philosophy is? Um, well, I think for me, we started from the beginning with our kids. We knew we were going to homeschool. So it did help that we sort of eased into it from the time they were toddlers to just moving into kindergarten. Although for me, I always felt like my first day of homeschooling was the day that a kindergarten bus drove by the house. And when it drove by without my kid on it, I'm like, okay, this is for real. <laughs> Even though she was already reading and writing and we were making a lot of progress, but yeah, I really enjoyed now that I've been in it for a while, a lot, let them play a lot. We did a lot of playing, even though I loved high school and homeschooling, I loved the fact that my kids got to play together and spend a lot of free time to do what they want to do. Turn the whole house into a fort. Yes, you know, that, kind that of was like my, the best days. And then as I got older, I think I still implemented a play type philosophy where they were engaged in what they're doing and this pursuing their passions, what they're interested in. I really like that. Um, and then overall, I really do a lot of reading and reading aloud and literature. <clears throat> um, so it kind of depends on the year. I sort of change, change it up, change it up a lot. I like keeping things fresh on my end of things since year after year after year, you can get feel like you're stuck in a rut. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's probably my biggest my biggest passion is is reading and literature and just let the kids, you know, kind of take a bite out of life. Yeah, and kind of pursue their passions as well. So we kind of watch what their strengths were and things that they really enjoyed doing and the things kind of where their dreams as they were chasing after life as well. And so being able to homeschool gave us the freedom to allow them to pursue some of those things too. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, definitely. I love that part about homeschooling. My second oldest right now, she's 17. And she wants to be a doula slash midwife. And she's actually already started that type of schooling and education. And she can because she has the free time in her home education. And we've actually included it in part of her homeschooling too. So it's been fun to see her watch her passion and develop her passion for this and just get really excited about her learning experiences too. I also enjoy what you guys mentioned about play school. So my oldest is 20 and my youngest is five. So I have a very wide... <laughs> age span there and when we first started out homeschooling we did the traditional school at home and I got the curriculum in a box because I didn't want to forget anything and over time we've kind of veered away from that we're more eclectic homeschoolers now but as I'm getting ready to start homeschooling our youngest I'm realizing that I'm enjoying more of the play school mm -hmm. and that time I mean we sit down and we have tea parties and we play with doll houses we play families and those kinds of things and we play with play donuts I'm enjoying that part of the schooling a lot. I'm thinking that's going to be my philosophy. I see my philosophy slowly changing as I'm kind of starting over in the homeschooling journey right now. So I def those are some exciting things that you guys are doing that I'm excited about. So you guys mentioned that you've been homeschooling a while now. Uh, mm -hmm. I also have been homeschooling a while. Have you guys noticed any changes in the homeschooling since when you first started homeschooling to homeschooling now and 
how people do homeschooling now or the exposure of homeschooling now compared to what you first well, started a year ago <laughs> <laughs> yes. just in the past year like i can bring my kid out in public and not get looks right <laughs> right <laughs> um, from my perspective i don't know my biggest thing is like the technology it just like even things like pdf curriculum and more online options and more more YouTube channels. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, but <laughs> there is a lot more um, resources at our fingertips. Oh yes, I, I love the fact that we have resources like that. It really, it does help. Now I think on one end it can be really overwhelming because there are so many choices. So I know mm -hmm. like curriculum in the beginning was harder to find, now it's everywhere, but it does make it hard to decide what to do when there's so many things to choose from. But I think that's the biggest thing is a lot, a lot more choices. I remember oh, the definitely. time that we ordered some curriculum and we had it like immediately. <laughs> We're like, wait, we don't have to wait for this. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, I need this book by tomorrow. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing too. We have rainbow resources like within you know 45 minutes of Peoria. So if you order from there, you get things like right away. So it's always exciting to get home. Okay, homeschooling curriculum shopping days in my house are like a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Even the kids like to get involved. And then when we actually get it in the mail, it becomes a huge party. Yeah. And they're trying to do like all of the year's work in like three days or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and the new stuff that comes out, you know, in the beginning of the school year when you're starting all your new stuff and they're like really excited about that. And there's a passion there. That's enjoyable too. <laughs> Definitely. And then you mentioned about all the different choices that you get. That's what I'm finding. I'm as my philosophy is slowly starting to change here with my youngest that we're starting to homeschooling school now start from the very beginning compared to my 20 year old when we started homeschooling her in the very beginning. I'm finding it very hard to narrow down because I want to try it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I want to pick this and I want to pick that. I want to do everything. And I'm like, well, I can't. I need to slowly roll over in the reins, Arcacia, because then I'm going to get overwhelmed. <laughs> but it's definitely hard. I had a slower experience. Like when my youngest kind of came up and I'd done this before and I've taught the kids to read before and I've taught them how to add before. And I kind of realized too, a lot of it is not necessarily the curriculum. Like the curriculum is a nice thing, but I realized in the end, I'm like, it's our relationship with the kids. And so mm -hmm. I might have used this math book for the first kid and a whole different math program, but you know, it didn't necessarily change who they were. It might have made, I don't know, the experience different. But in the end, I realized, hey, it's about spending time with your kid. And if you don't spend right. time with your kid and actually invest in them, doesn't matter what program you had. So I think in the beginning, you're easy to think that if I just get this fancy program, it'll turn out okay. And it's like, but you have to show up with your kid mm -hmm. and spend time with them, whether you're doing something fancy or not fancy. Right. And building the relationships with your kids, which kind of leads me to my next question that we have is what has been the benefits that you have noticed for your family because you homeschool? Well, yeah, fa family togetherness. Um, it, it allows us to, to have a closeness, I think, that would be lost if we weren't together mm -hmm. all the time. Um, being able to recognize issues and problems pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but also being able to see what our kids' interests are and what are they into. And we always had one of those homes where everybody would come to our house. So mm -hmm. it was really kind of cool because we knew what friends our kids were friends with and what they were up to and, and kind of what they were doing. And I think one of the things that, that we liked most was that our kids could pursue uh, their passions. So like our daughter, who's 20, is it four now, mm -hmm. has published four books she always wanted to be an author. And if I had a nickel for every stapled together piece of paper, that was a book when she was younger, you know, dreaming about um, writing books. And so she's been uh, officially publishing since she was like 12, but being able to do that. And then all our boys have their own stories like that, but being able to have time to be, to focus on those things was huge for us. Yeah. I like what he said too, about catching stuff. I think when you're with your kids that much, you do catch things right away. Like, so mm -hmm. if you're missing a math fact, it's not like three weeks later, you go, you don't have that math fact. You're very aware. And so it's even moms have asked me about grading. I'm like, well, grading's kind of silly because grading's good for a classroom when a, one adult's trying to keep track of 25 kids. Mm -hmm. But if you're with your kid all day, you're pretty aware of what they're struggling with. You're pretty aware to go, this, this is the blend they can't get down. This is the word they can't pronounce. So I did like homeschooling that I always had a good idea of where they were at, what they were struggling with. Um, as well as character issues, you know, right. when you're with your kids all day, you know what their character issues are. <laughs> and sometimes half the day could get spent on just nailing down a, a bad habit. <laughs> right. 
and how many conversations we had about deeper faith issues mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to, to have the time to, to talk those things mm -hmm. through. And I don't know if most parents see this, but for our kids, if we were tucking them in saying good, uh, good night at night or, or having some time during the day to spend with them, it was never in those first few moments that mm -hmm. the deeper questions came. Mm -hmm. They always mm -hmm. came after a little bit of time. And so to be able to have that space to have those deeper conversations were huge for us. Yeah, we had probably a little less rushed lifestyle. I mean, things were busy at home with a lot of kids, but I think not having a massive schedule on an everyday basis meant when a kid kind of dropped a bomb of like a question, mm -hmm. you're like, wow, that's a good question. And you can just kind of put things aside and address those things right away without saying, no, 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 we have to finish this first. Like, nope, that's right. a really good question. And that deserves some time. And we could just enjoy being in that, that space to really address heart issues. Right, some opportunities to dig deeper, definitely. I love that about our homeschooling experience too. So with homeschooling, everybody, I know the myth is out there, well, you're homeschool, so you're home a lot and you never get outside those walls, do you? So my next question for you guys would be, how do you make those connections? Because we know it's a myth that we don't socialize. We know it's a myth, but how do you make those connections with other people for yourself, for your kids, for your family? How do you make those connections outside of your home? Well, for us, our church is a big part of it. We were always very involved at church and there wasn't necessarily a huge homeschool community there, but we loved, that was just the main source of socialization and things that be involved with. We always had neighborhood kids hanging around. And then we did have a good homeschool community through co-ops and homeschool events. So I think in the end, the kids kind of were in various, various things. My first daughter was very, very social. There was no option. It was always, who can come over? Where can I go? Where are we going today? Like, so she kind of drove that. Like, there was no way we weren't going to be social. Like, so, so we would throw a party. Happen. She would have a party. I mean, she had a party for every occasion you can imagine. <laughs> so we'd throw a party, and the last person would leave, and her question would basically be, "When is the next party?" So it's <laughs> very, very social. And we had, like Tara said, we just had people in the house a lot, and we're just doing things a lot. Now, granted, like that's our biggest challenge right now because we just moved to a new area, and so we haven't made all those connections yet. And with COVID and everything changing, that's been a much bigger challenge yeah. to find to find people and find groups. So yeah. it just we're taking it slower, but you know it'll happen. Definitely, definitely. Sounds like I also have one of those social butterf butterflies <laughs> who makes friends everywhere and then you know is always talking. She's like loves to talk. She has a word count that I think she has to meet every single day. <laughs> so she's one that will talk your ear off. And we made a, a little bit of a joke. You know, just a few years ago, we had ended up switching churches. And the reason why we connected to the church that we did was because of her. The very first Sunday, she's out, you know, doesn't know anybody. She's being a little busy being. She's meeting everybody in the little pockets of friends and stuff and, you know, introducing herself. And she comes from a family of introverts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she definitely also encourages us to get out there more and to um, kind of let our guard down more and make ourselves a little bit more vulnerable to make those connections. So those social butterflies are good in families, I think. It gets us introverts out <laughs> a little bit. And it feels a little bit more, less awkward, right? A little yes, <laughs> definitely. So do you ever feel like um, the decision to homeschool your kids was a bad decision? And if you, um, or has been a struggle for you um, at any time? And how do you get over that? I mean, we all have those moments when we're, we're struggling with one thing or another. So, you know, and homeschooling is never gonna be perfect. You know, there's going to be those struggles and homeschooling. So how do you overcome those feelings and those thoughts to push through to realize that God, the journey that God has placed on your family's hearts? Well, I never felt it was a bad decision. I've been fairly confident most of my time, but I did question if it was the best decision, you know, mm -hmm. like, especially if the kids get older, you kind of go, did I do right by my kid? You know, we know that God has given us a huge responsibility. And so homeschooling right. And such a huge mantle of so much training that go, if I mess this up, I'm messing up a lot. Right. So I think you always can question was it the best decision. And I know a lot of friends of mine who homeschool have come to the point where they say it's not the best decision, you know, and they made, they made some changes. Mm -hmm. I think it's part of the territory as parents that we're always going to look back at things we did and said, was that the best I could have done? And there's probably areas that it wasn't the best. And to mm -hmm. be able to say, there's grace to those parts. And if we're following God and taking each day at a time that we haven't ruined our kids yet, I don't think so. No. But yeah, it's I, not a bad decision. And we we never made the decision to homeschool like 
all the way. Mm -hmm. That was our plan, but we mm -hmm. took it each year at a time. We really prayed that through and kind of reassessed where the kids were, where we were, did it, did it still make sense for us? And, and it did. And all the, we still have two kids left, but our mm -hmm. older two are through high school and they're done and we homeschooled them all the way through. And I think one of the greatest um, for us, number one, watching our older two be very successful at what they're doing and where God is calling them is a huge uh, proof, if you will, that we did exactly what God wanted us to do. It doesn't mean it has yeah. to work out that well, but it, it did for us for now. Um, but I think the biggest um, compliment or uh, I don't know, I guess you'd call it a compliment is when our kids thank us, yeah. our older two will often thank us for homeschooling them. And I think even growing up, I was trying to think about this, like, you know, we talked to, to parents who are homeschooling their kids and their kids really want to be in school. They always, you know, you know, a lot of homeschooling families have that one kid that really just wants to be in school. And I don't think our kids ever wanted to be in school. They just wanted to ride the bus. <laughs> so, we could have let them ride the bus. They or see fun. your friends. Right. <laughs> the big yellow bus is always a draw, right? <laughs> yeah. Social butterflies, so then school isn't the answer because then you're the one, the, the teacher saying, stop socializing, okay. you know, <laughs> stop listening and yeah, so I think it's it's part of the territory as parents as we're always mm -hmm. going to question ourselves. And yeah. I think I do, you know, obviously I'm still saying, hey, how can I do it better? And how right. can I how can I be more faithful to do best by my kids? But I think it's I don't I always want to offer myself a level of grace to say I really am doing the best I can with what I have, with the kids I have, with the resources that I have. And you know, the parents who I know have kids in public school have the same thing. They wonder right bad by doing the best for them and it's it's a hard hard decision and i think yeah and i think at the end of the day you really have to trust god day in and day out right mm -hmm. because you know i i'll lay in bed at night and be like hey our kids turned out in spite of us right <laughs> like god really did take care of it because there so many places that we we really could have messed it up and god just was faithful in in the day in and day out definitely definitely you mentioned some great things about trusting god and relying on his grace because i think ultimately you mentioned you know I think every parent struggles with but this, whether they homeschool or not, are we making the best decisions for our kids? Are we going to mess them up? And ultimately, we're all imperfect human beings and we're all sinners and we do have to rely on that grace and, you know, owning the mistakes that we do make and say, and, and then doing better and repenting from those mistakes is also important too. So definitely God's grace. I don't think I could continue this journey without relying on his grace. <laughs> you know, his grace is sufficient, right? <laughs> And worst case scenario, our kids will be graduating high school at 36, but you know. <laughs> and I think also I've realized that some kids when they struggle with something, they're going to struggle with that no matter where they yeah, are. The right. right. Get his things done on time at home. So sometimes it's just, a, it's a, it's the kids that struggle, not necessarily the environment. Right. True, true, true. So how do you respond to others who um, maybe have a negative reaction to your decision to homeschool? Because I you know we've had a lot of people that have been interested in homeschooling and have contacted Apache through this last year because of the pandemic. And that's probably one of the number one questions we get is, how do you convince everybody else? <laughs> we haven't really struggled with this. My first response is, I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm, we're good. Like, we're fine. And we mostly that's because I've never had, I haven't had major pushback from anybody really in my life. Like, my husband has always been right there. My parents, the beginning might have been a little bit skeptical but like in time they became my biggest cheerleaders so I feel like I haven't had to fight against a negative mindset at all I mean the stranger well, in the store yeah. I just don't care what they think <laughs> or yeah I think, random. I think my daughter was five and we were at a Christmas party with with family and possibly and friends and there were possibly a couple yeah. of skeptical people there and for whatever reason we just they were asking my five-year-old questions and she just rattled off every president in order all the way out to the the most recent president at the time and i mean that was the end of it people were like I'll keep doing what you're again. doing because <laughs> but it's funny because i mean that's just that's a smart child that's not really our product at, at five years old of homeschooling mm -hmm. although I was been reading to her since she was one and jolie or before that and jolie loved to memorize stuff and all that that but um it was really interesting again as you homeschool you're going to hush the naysayers because the, the product will be there. Your, your kids will respond to it. And so mm -hmm. yeah, Tara just never, it never bothered Tara yeah. at all. She's like, we're, we're responsible for these children in our house. 
you know, nobody out there is responsible for them. We are. And so we're going to do the best that we can by them. And yeah, I think for the most part, I feel like people who have been not, not like strangers often are have more uh, curiosity sometimes, not so mm -hmm. much like weird, but how do you do that? And so like, I try to respond in the positive and saying, well, here's the things that we really like about this rather than just being cranky about it. Right. But, yeah, I've been very blessed. <laughs> I haven't had a huge amount of negative Definitely finding the lightness and the lightheartedness in the situation, I think, is important. And like you mentioned earlier, is, you know, our kid, kids are the product and people will see over time the benefits of homeschooling, not just academically, right, right there, you know, the character building and the relationships that they have and those kinds of things, too, speaks for itself <laughs> at a lot of times. So just having patience <laughs> with, till, till you get to that point and then definitely, you know, not being so much worried about what other people think and realize and taking ownership that this is, these are our children and we're the ones that are, you know, responsible for them, not other people. And so the, we're the ones that need to be making these decisions and being confident in that. And I think that also happens a little bit over time because I remember when I first started homeschooling, you know, you're a little nervous because <laughs> you're afraid, you know, this is a new journey and everything like that. So definitely it takes a little bit of time to build that character, I think, too. And I think that's important for all new, anyone who's considering it for the first time is that no one is perfect at it. Mm -hmm. And no one's exactly what you just said. No one's perfect at it. No one's perfect at it right out of the gate. And we definitely wondered if we were doing the right thing. And we had to pray about that and really, really, uh, you know, discuss that out and make sure. And, and in the beginning, it was easier when, when our kids were young mm -hmm. because, if you mess them up, then you put them in school and then they catch up pretty quick, right? right. Uh, in the early years, it's when you start getting into the later <clears throat> years. But by then, if you've been doing it all along, you have, you've built that level of confidence. But I would say there are times when we really did look at each other and be like, mm -hmm. what in the world are we doing? So just know that that's very normal, mm -hmm. um, especially as a first time homeschooler. But I think people are a lot more qualified than they realize, mm -hmm. especially when you realize all the resources that are out there. And the confidence is even in the case of your kids not struggling. So if your kid is not brilliant and cannot, you know, wow all your neighbors with their intelligence, if your kids are struggling, that still says, I need to be homeschooling them to help them through the struggle. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean your kids always have to be the smartest and brightest in the block for homeschooling right. to be successful. If your right. kid is the kid who's struggling or has some kind of disability, sometimes homeschooling is what you're doing that for too as well. Definitely. You mentioned Joe about resources. So what has been the best resource that you guys have found in your homeschooling? Well, okay. could I say it in one word? <laughs> <laughs> library. I love public library. <laughs> there, there have been times and I'll, I'll let Tara answer this question because, but there have been times when there's probably no less than a hundred library books in our house. And I'm like, we're going to get have so many library fines. What I told my husband is when we get our property tax bill and there's a big, big number for that school district we're paying to, and there's a little small number for the library. I just switch it in my head. <laughs> I feel yes. I'm like, okay, we're paying this many thousand dollars for the library. That That's cool. Yeah, I love libraries and the fact that a lot of them have gone fine free now because of yes. COVID. I'm like, yes, now yes. I don't have to keep track of those books. So much. Yes, and I also would add to that, my home library has been really good. So I like buying books as well. And even though the public library is great, over the years, having a good home library is really good. I'm just the kind of person where like, we get rabbit trails going and we're like, let's look at that or let's look that up in this thing or let's, oh, let's find a book to read. So I think having a good home library is really great. And even though my kids are older, I've saved all my kids' books for little kids' books because they're mm -hmm. just, um, I mean, obviously not everyone is into that, but for me, that's been a big resource is to have a good home library, have a good um, public library to visit. And the interlibrary loan has saved my life. Oh yes, I love interlibrary loan, especially now um, when the library is closed down for a while. And we do a lot of literature too, especially in our history and our science that we do. And so I'm constantly looking up. I love that little interlibrary loan feature. I'm like, oh, I can just look up you know, 15 books that I need, reserve them all, and the library lets me know when they're available. One trip. <laughs> exactly. So that's been huge. And then on a practical level too, like since PDF curriculum came out, I'm loving PDF curriculum and having a good printer <laughs> where I can cheap, cheaply print has been really nice. So you know, like if a kid messes up a sheet of paper, you can reprint it if you want to print doubles for the next kid. Mm -hmm. So on a practical level, having a good printer has been lifesaver as well. 
to just print out as much as you want without having to worry about running out to get you know copies or anything yes definitely pdfs um this past year with my five-year-old we've been doing a lot of lap books mm -hmm. and so we've been finding a lot of that stuff online for free and so my printer has been my savior mm -hmm. <laughs> and she i mean i usually it's like on a weekly or bi-weekly basis i'll be like well, what do you want to learn about that today and she'll be like i want to learn about like just a few weeks ago she's like i want to learn about animals in the zoo so we did a whole unit study on animals in the zoo and we did a lap book and the printer saved our lives because i must have printed 50 pages <laughs> of yeah, yeah, activities yeah. that we could do <laughs> you're doing like some of the older kid the younger kid wants to do it you're just uh -huh. like okay you can have this too even though you don't know what you're doing <laughs> We do that for our art class because our art class is a little bit of, you know, it's a lot above uh, my youngest, my five year old, but she kind of tags along with it and she does her little drawings and I, I print out the sheets for her too. She may not, you know, follow exactly along the lines of what the older kids are doing, but she enjoys it and she's picking <laughs> up little things, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think she is because we saw that with our kids too. Or, or all of a sudden you'd see the older one leaning over to the younger one and showing them how yeah. to do it, which was kind of cool. That's a whole benefit. I think the, the siblings teaching each other, you really can't mm -hmm. explain it till you see it happen. In fact, when my youngest was about five or six, my oldest was like 15. And I remember saying to her at that point, hey, can you sit down with your brother and teach him to read? I mean, I taught him quite a bit, but they had such a good bond together that she would sit with them and do the blends and do the sounding out. I thought this is the best thing ever. And she has that memory as well of teaching mm -hmm. her little brother how to read or all that kind of thing as they're growing up. And just last night, yeah. uh, he finished a, a book series. He's now 10 and she's 20 and they're discussing it together. They're, I'm like, they're how talking. about we do a book club together? <laughs> it was really cool to, to kind of witness that. It was pretty well. It's awesome that they can build relationships like that and you can do that with homeschooling. Yeah. So what do you guys do if something is not working out for one of your children or all your children, you're realizing this is just not working out for you or for your kids. Um, what is the step that you take to kind of refocus or the plan to get something that does work for you guys? I'm definitely one to like start something new if I'm if, if it's not working. I think maybe too much though. Like if it's really dragging us down and dragging us down, we'll try something new. Now I think in my in my experience, sometimes there's times you have to know when to push through to go. You don't like it. It's not fun. We're not liking it, but let's just push through a little bit. Maybe we need to get two more weeks of this and we'll get, we'll finally catch it. We'll catch the fire. We'll catch what the, the publisher here is trying to do. And other times you're like, you know what? This is just ridiculous. I wouldn't want to do this if I were 10 years old either. You know, <laughs> and you realize that it's not fulfilling your, your goals for your kid. It's not helping them learn what they want to learn. If it's adding only frustration to your homeschool and only, you know, tears, then it's like, we definitely take a step back. Um, might depend how much money I spent on the program, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I spent too much money on it, I'm like, shoot, this was supposed to be so good. And it isn't. Yeah, so a little bit of that mom guilt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I definitely am fine with switching through this year with my son with algebra. We started with one program and he was struggling with it. I'm like, my goal is for you to understand algebra and just, so if this is making you cry and you can't even get excited about it, then let's try a different format, a different, mm -hmm. a book or a computer program, because my goal is to help you understand it, not just to do it how this person wants to do it so. right no, i agree and i think sometimes it's it, there's an assessment process of understanding where the child is mm -hmm. um making sure that he or she's not just being lazy or just it isn't fun or whatever and allowing there to be those moments of perseverance right to, right. to work hard at something so tara's been a really good read of that and so when she said she's hands-on day in and day out she, um we'll sometimes talk about it but ultimately if she feels it's not working we'll just we're like well we'll just switch it up maybe this will work for someone else but i really but, like giving my kids a lot of um say so in what they're doing mm -hmm. so it's like okay i would like you to learn these things what what format do you like best do you want to try a video do you want to try this a unit study like kind of letting them know you need to learn this but what appeals to where you think and you know and you have different level different kids they think differently and you have to kind of tap into that to go, what is it, how they think that would help them learn that? And it might be different for each kid too. You get to, you know, number two, number three, number four, number five, and go, oh, this doesn't work for them as well as it did for the other one. So I we, sometimes give them a level of choice, but. Yeah. I was Definitely. just going to say, we have five kids. Well, they have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, two things that you mentioned for sure is um, how having your kids 
you know, an active participant in their education and choosing what they want to learn and how they want to learn. And I've done that too a lot with my oldest kids is I'm like, so what do you guys want to learn this year? What are some of your passions? And it helps them if they can own their education a little bit. It does help them persevere a little bit more through that. And also the second thing is give yourself permission to change it up. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of times we're like, well, we invested in this curriculum and we spent money and we spent time in this and we don't want to give it up. But I think it's also important for our kids to learn that we need to be able to give ourselves permission that it's okay to change and maybe a sacrifice because we may have put some money into that or some time. But if it's not working, then the bigger, the better, bigger benefit would be to change it up and being okay with that. So, so some things that you can do in homeschooling, but not necessarily in public education. And I find that that's one of the few benefits that we actually enjoy with the homeschooling part. <laughs> is those definitely conversations though. So if we're having something not working, we can sit down for a while and talk about it mm -hmm. saying, Hey, I don't like it is not a good enough reason. Right. <laughs> you know, sometimes the kids are really smart. They're like, they have a really good argument. Like, well, it asked me to do this and it didn't even show me where the answer was. I'm like, you're right. It asked you that question and didn't show you where the answer is. So like, so if they can have like a good enough argument to convince me I'll move than just saying, I don't like it, you know? So some mm -hmm. of the kids to think about their education and go, why don't you like that program? Is it the teacher talks too monotone? Okay. Or sometimes their reasoning isn't good enough. So then I'm like, well, let's just keep trying it. But if you convince me that for why, then we'll go with it, you know, so good debate skills. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely developing those reasoning skills are second oldest. She's technically my oldest one that I'm homeschooling right now. She's in algebra two. Mm -hmm. And she came to me, uh, probably beginning of December, I think it was. And she says, mama, see, first of all, I'm not the math person in our family. My husband is the math person. Once they hit algebra, I turn it over to him. <laughs> and I'm okay saying that because I like the science and the history. That's my passion. And I'm okay as part of our homeschooling is he does the math and I do the other stuff. <laughs> and so he, um, with us owning our own business, he's busy with work. And then he just finished his degree in December. So he was doing a lot of um, schooling on his own. So he didn't have a lot of time to put into helping her with the problems that she had um, difficulty with. So she looked at me, she's like, mama, I know that I need one more year of math, which is this algebra two. And she's like, I have one more year of high school. How about we shelf this for this year because daddy doesn't, can't have the time to spend to teach me the stuff that I'm having problems with. And I started back up next year. And she had a really good legitimate oh. argument. And I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea. You've put some thought into this. You've had to, you know, she had some reasoning about, you know, what she knew what she needed. She knew the time frame she needed it in, and she knew the people that could help her with it and the timing that they could put into it. So it's definitely great for them to develop those reasoning skills and to be able to think through a process and come to the conclusion at the end, too. That goes back to, I think, when you're homeschooling, you do have to have that reasoning because you go, well, we're going to do this because this is the way it's done, right? People right. Do this. But then when you're reasoning with a teenager, you have to really understand why you want them to do anything. You're like, well, because that's what they do. That's what people do. You're like, well, no, let me think about it. And then in time, I'll be able to say, no, these are actual skills that will help you develop your reasoning skills. And like algebra, mm -hmm. it will help you with your logic. It may not be in your job, but so I think as a parent, you're forced to sort of defend your choices. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? Well, Definitely. You learn this? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes parents have to develop those reasoning skills too. Yes, we have to think through it. We're like, okay, what is the reasoning why we're doing this? <laughs> so I'm right there with you. So as we're getting ready to close here, um, we've had a lot of uh, new homeschoolers this past year because of the pandemic. And so I would like to just ask you guys, what is one piece of advice that you would offer to those new homeschoolers that you really wish that somebody would have offered you when you first started out on your homeschooling journey? Um, I think the one thing that I, I heard somewhere along the way, but have since then understood more is don't expect your kid to be perfect, not perfect, but equal and balanced in all areas. I think we had this idea of a public school where you spend a half an hour in science and half an hour in history and the kids just even, or I think most kids are not balanced as much. They're going to be stronger in one area and weaker in one area. And so it's easy as a parent to look at those weak areas and go, oh, I'm failing or my kid's failing. When really it is all of us as people have things we're not good at. I mean, you, you're not good at algebra and you never will be. <laughs> but if, if someone just judged you on your algebra skills, mm -hmm. you a failure, right? Versus saying, right. no, no, actually, I'm really, really good at this stuff over here. And if I put my mind in these areas, that's when I 
come into, you know, my skill set. So I think if you're starting to homeschool, you feel like you have to do everything right. And every, as a parent, we bring different skills to the table at our, we're stronger in some areas and our kids the same way. So I think if you let them, if you assume it's going to be an imbalance in what they do, I think you'll be easier on yourself. Mm-hmm. That right. on the subject they're not good at, it's not a reflection on you as a parent. They might just not be good at it. <laughs> And I think um, you're more qualified than you think Mm -hmm. you are. I think we have heard so many people through the years say, I could never do that, or I'm not this, or I'm not that. And and it really is with the resources that are available uh, and finding a friend or two who maybe is a little bit further down the road, Mm -hmm. who's been homeschooling a little bit, um, they can be a major, major help. And for Tara, I remember when she got into the first co-op mm-hmm. with our kids and how that really changed so much for us on a dynamic level with our kids. Uh, if you're doing it all alone, you can feel really isolated. And, and especially in the year that we've had, that can be really difficult. But if you, if you can find access to uh, some people in the community who are, are willing to help, and, and most homeschoolers are, by the way, you'll find that you're, you're far more qualified. And here's the other thing. We were not, uh, we did not have 10 years of homeschooling experience our first week. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes that's a myth. Sometimes we think to ourselves, we have to be this place to really take off. And you have to realize that to get 10 years of experience, you're going to need 10 years. You can't, there's no shortcuts there. So right. I think to give yourself a break. And if it's something you feel God is leading you to do, then he will equip you. And, uh, and you will, you will surprise yourself. Yeah. Like what Joe said about having friends ahead. I think it's easy to like always surround yourself with your peers. But I remember when I first started homeschooling, I joined a co-op and my oldest was first grade and I preschooler. And everyone there had older kids. I remember just being like, kind of in awe, like, wow, you homeschool these 12 year olds. <laughs> They're so grown up. But it was really good because week after week, surrounding yourself with people that are just a few years ahead, it kind of helps you when you get to that point. Because you remember conversations that you had, remember things they are talking about, you know, curriculum names. And I think always having people in my life that were a little ahead of me helped making that stage better. So it wasn't as overwhelming. Yeah. And once you start to verbalize that you're thinking about it, people will come out of the woodwork mm-hmm. and, and they will be willing to help. It's, a, it's an mm-hmm. amazing thing. The, the homeschooling community mm-hmm. is, is very good. Absolutely. Very supportive and very good. Well, Joe and Tara, we want to thank you for joining us tonight for our Apache Family Spotlight. It was great getting to know you and a little bit about your homeschooling journey. So thank you for joining us tonight. And just if anybody is interested in becoming an Apache Family Spotlight, you can do that. You just need to email us or send us a Facebook message and we can direct you on how to do that. So thanks again, guys, for joining us tonight. Thanks. Have a good night.